Hi and welcome to this video on the Alkanes. So if you like polluting the planet, you drive around your car for fun and just generally despise hippies, this is a topic which will probably interest you. Um, so a few points to start off with the Alkanes. They are saturated. So what do we mean by saturated? Well they are all carbon-carbon single bonds. So there is no carbon-carbon double bonds present in these. So that's the things like the alkenes. So the alkanes all carbon single bond carbon. We've got the general formula across here. So you should be aware of this from sort of the, the introduction to organic chemistry in terms of the alkanes are a homologous series. So they have a gradual change in physical properties, but they all react chemically similar and they all have the same general formula there. Now where do we get alkanes from? Crude oil. I've underlined crude there because that's usually a mistake what people make in the exams. They'll just say from oil. It tends to be on mark schemes they want you to say crude oil because you can, as we'll see, do some fractional distillation on oil to sort of filter out what's actually in there. So you need to be specific. So fractional distillation, what this separates things according to is their boiling point. So you'll put it in a chamber, you'll boil it, and effectively your long chain hydrocarbons, your long chain alkanes, will have quite a high boiling point. So they'll tend to come off the bottom. Whereas the shorter chain alkanes boil quite easily, they will go up to the top. You've probably seen the, the column with the little wiggly lines coming in. And so you'll get the shorter ones actually being distilled off the top, longer ones off the bottom. You need to also take into account the branching in there. So the, the, short, the straight chain alkanes, sorry, they will have a higher boiling point than the branched ones. It's to do with the van der Waals effect. If you think about it, if you've got two flat things, they can come more into contact. There is more surface area between these. So there will be more van der Waals interactions between the actual molecules. So the straight chain alkanes have a higher boiling point than the branched ones. The branched ones, not much points of contact, so not as much van der Waals can take place between them. So that's how you separate them. So if you get the crude oil from the sea, so crude oil effect made dead animals, decomposed pressure, etc. GCRC. Then stick it in a fractional distillation column and you can start getting the specific components what you want. Because obviously petrol, as opposed to sort of bitumen which you use on road surfaces, you want them for quite distinct different uses. When from crude oil, there tends to be a lot of the long chain um, hydrocarbons, the alkanes in crude oil. Those aren't the, the most economically valuable ones. Obviously the economically valuable ones are petrol to go in car, you've got sort of the naphthas, kerosenes, things like that, plain fuels, the LPG, so forth. The short chain alkanes tend to be worth more. So what you actually do is you get your long chain one and there is a fo two forms of cracking. Now what cracking is, is you break the carbon-carbon bond. So you're going to effectively just snap that. There's two ways of doing it. One, thermal. Just heat it up so high that effectively the bond vibrates and snaps apart. Two, catalytic. So more or less you just use a catalyst just to have a lower temperature and lower pressure in there. So it just aids the breaking apart. Um, you don't need to sort of remember the actual catalysts for this. But if you want, it's always worthwhile knowing something extra. When you do the thermal, you tend to get the short chain alkanes and alkenes. Now the alkenes are useful as building blocks for lots of things. Most common one, easiest one to say if you're asked to describe why or what they could be used for, plastics. Plastics, very abundant, very used in today's society. So alkenes used for that. The catalytic tends to get you the cycloalkanes, not really as valuable, but they tend to sometimes be used for the fuels as well. Do not say why things are cracked, get the short chain alkanes because they are useful. That will never get you a mark. Use is defined by who wants it. Um, effectively, if I've got a choice between a pizza and a shotgun, 
If I'm hungry, the pizza is more useful to me. If I'm being burgled late at night, the shotgun is more useful for me. Do not just say more useful. Why things are cracked, to get the short chain alkanes, they are more economically valuable. They are worth more. So that's why you do it. Okay, the most common reaction what you need for the alkanes, the alkanes come, come bonds, very boring, very unreactive. Uh, reason why, advantage of that, they're in your DNA. You do not want your DNA, things like that, reacting with all the chemicals in your body. So calm, calm bonds, very stable under normal conditions, quite resistant to chemical attack. So the main thing what we actually use them for, as I said, burn them. So this is complete combustion. You get complete you get carbon dioxide when you've got an excess of oxygen and you've burned things fully. So carbon dioxide there signifies it's complete. Um, how to balance this? First thing the method I always say to use it, count how many carbons in this. So one, two, so we want two CO2s there. How many hydrogens here? Three, six. So what times two gives you six? Three. And then add up the oxygens. So two times two is four, plus three, seven. What do I need to times two by to get up to seven? Three and a half. That's the easiest method for always tackling balancing these equations. You can have two, seven, four, six if you like. Equally correct. Um, an incomplete reaction. So this is where you don't have enough oxygen, so it doesn't actually combust fully. So it's not as efficient, this is where you get the dirty fumes coming off the back of cars, or if you burn things in the lab and you're getting all sorts of black smoke. It's because there's not enough oxygen getting in there and you're getting the dirty soot coming off. So carbon monoxide, quite toxic, this is why you want your car engine to burn things fully. And if you're asked sort of what's the solid product of incomplete combustion, Carbon, soot, dirt. Um, so be careful. Sometimes they like to chuck that in. What's the gaseous uh, product of incomplete carbon monoxide? What's the solid of incomplete carbon? You'd still get water with them as well. So the catalytic converters are in cars to make sure things burn fully and try and get rid of some of the, the toxic fumes. So one of the catalysts, there's quite a few different metals in there acting as catalysts. Easiest one to remember is platinum. Platinum is a sort of um, good all rounder for practically everything. So if ever you're unsure of a catalyst, just stick platinum down. Chances are the odds will favour you. Now it's put in a honeycomb structure, why? To get a big surface area. You should know factors of kinetics, a big surface area, effectively spread out more means there is more points of contact to hit the platinum, so there is more reactions can take place per unit of time. So then it will be better making sure there's complete combustion and better at making sure that it gets rid of gases. The reason they use unleaded petrols, lead poisons a catalyst. What I mean by poisoning, effectively it sticks to the catalyst, doesn't leave, screws it up, and then your catalytic converter breaks. Um, so some of the gases this helps to get rid of. So nitrogen monoxide, so this is toxic. Carbon dioxide, that is toxic. So we want to try and get rid of those. It can react these together So I just balance that. Um, so two nitrogens, two nitrogens. We've got three oxygens. 
So, three, six. Should have probably done this before. There we go. So that's balanced now. Uh, easiest way, I suppose. I had effectively two nitrogens there. I wanted one there. I could have just put a half in front of it. So dealing with halves, perfectly fine. If I wanted one, one, half, one, that would have also been acceptable. So nitrogen, harmless, you're breathing it in now. Carbon dioxide, it is a greenhouse gas, but it's not as bad as carbon monoxide in terms of the toxicity and the effects of getting into the atmosphere. You should know obviously what a greenhouse gas is. It's one of the things which people think um, responsible global warming occurring. So it gets into the ozone, um, heat comes in, can it escape, effectively heats up the planet. So carbon dioxide is a greenhouse gas, but water is also a greenhouse gas when you're burning the fuels. Um, final little bit on this is in terms of some of the impurities which can exist within the alkanes and when they get burnt. The main impurity which you will talk about will be a sulfur impurity. So sulfur, when you combust it, when it's in the furnace with all the others, combusts with oxygen, gives you sulfur dioxide. Now the problem with sulfur dioxide is when it gets into the atmosphere, it starts reacting with any water vapour and any oxygen about. Um, it, it wouldn't really matter which of these two, which way around you had those. As long as you sort of finish up with something like that, even sort of getting into there is perfectly fine. So H2SO4, you should be aware of that, common lab chemical, sulfuric acid. You do not want sulfuric acid in the sky because it's going to come down in the water, acid rain, poor little fishies, effectively you're going to be acidifying the lakes, they're all going to die. If it pours out of buildings, it's going to start corroding all of that. So you do not want acid rain. We need to try and get rid of the H2SO4 somehow. So the way to stop it is in the power plants, this SO2, what they actually have is some calcium carbonate scrubbers. So the SO2 is acidic. So how do you get rid of an acid? Well, an acid base reaction, neutralize it. So as I said, what we're going to use here is calcium carbonate. We're going to react it with the, the sulfur dioxide. So the equation to do that some calm dioxide given off as well. So calcium sulfate produced there um, used in plaster. So once you've got that on the side, react with the sulfur dioxide in your plant, literally they would just scrub it off, sell it into the, the building trade. So calcium sulfate plaster. Um, obviously you're still producing a greenhouse there, greenhouse gas there, so there's a little bit of a problem with it but it's much better than getting the acid rain coming out. And that is it more or less for the alkanes topic. So as I say, it ties in with the introduction to organic chemistry, you do still need to be able to name the alkanes and look at the isomers of them. But it tends to be the economic effects, common sense really, greenhouse gases, acid rains, you want to try and avoid them. The uses of the alkanes, petrols, where you get them from, and how you get from long chains to short chains. So that's all, thank you.